The pentatonic scale is not really a scale. It actually has a lot more in common with chords than it does other scales, and it does so in a very unique and particular way. But is it actually beneficial to think of pentatonics in this manner? Is it actually going to help us get better at music and understanding guitar solos, etc.? Or is it just simply intellectual pandering? Let's discuss. What's up, everyone? My name is Matthew Dale, and I am here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And we're going to be talking about the pentatonic arrangement or the pentatonic group of notes today. And just to be clear, I'm not really talking about labels. I'm not going to change the label of the pentatonic scale. I'm talking about use and actually application. Now, typically, the way I would say that most of us have learned the pentatonic scale myself included, would be guitar teacher plays something in A, shows us a fingering of the A minor pentatonic scale, and says we can use that to improvise a guitar solo. Right, and we start to build our language that way. Now, leave a comment in the space below if that has been your experience learning pentatonic scales, especially if it uh, was A minor that seems to be, you know, the synonymous first scale that we all learn, A minor pentatonic scale. And if you have a different experience, let me know what that is as well. I would love to hear what your first experience with the pentatonic scale has been. Now, we all start somewhere, and that's a good starting place, but the problem is it's not the ending place. It's just one stone in a pathway along our musical journeys. And we see that lived out when all of a sudden minor pentatonic doesn't always work anymore. So if we were playing A, minor pentatonic licks, to all of a sudden an A major 7, Some, suddenly, this doesn't really work, right? So the next thing we learn is, okay, we'll move the minor pen pentatonic down three frets. And now we have the major pentatonic. Again, that's just the next stepping stone. That is also not the end point. We can actually get more and more advanced with our pentatonic scales especially if we think of them in terms of chords or almost arpeggio-like. Quick warning, we are about to dive pretty deep into the subjects of music theory. So if you want something to assist you along the way or you want a really great reference guide, hit the link in the description below to download my Essential Music Theory Cheat Sheet. So here's the construction of the major pentatonic scale. I'm going to talk major first because our minor pentatonic is actually relative to the major pentatonic. So here is just C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then back to C, right? Number system-wise, that's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then back to 1. What we do to make that major pentatonic is we remove the 4th degree and the 7th degree the F and the B. One, two, three, five, six, and then back to one. Now, scales, the classical way of looking at a scale, is built in intervals of seconds, either minor seconds or major seconds. So our root note, major second, major second, minor second, major second, major second, major second, minor second. Chords, however, are built in thirds. One, major third, minor third, major third for a major seven. And then I could keep going if I built everything up into thirds that way. Pentatonic exists in this land in between those two spaces. So pentatonic would be one, major second, major second, minor third, major second, minor third. So pentatonic is really this perfect midway point between chords and between scales. And we see that the primary note ingredients in major pentatonic starts with the major triad. One, three, five, with the second and the sixth added in as well. Let's take a look at minor pentatonic as well. So C major pentatonic is the same thing as A minor pentatonic, and that would result in this arrangement of notes. So one, flat three, four, five, and flat seven, 
and then we go back to one. And again, the chord is very prevalent here, the minor triad, one, flat, three, five, along with the fourth degree and the minor seventh degree. All right, now here's something that's gonna be really, really interesting. Um, don't mind me while I get super nerdy for a second, but this will hopefully make things make a lot more sense. Um, take a look at my super nerdy graph here. This graph shows our diatonic chords, written as seven chords, so one major seven, two minor seven, three minor seven, four major seven, five dominant seven, six minor seven, and seven minor seven flat five. We also have our modal names up here because really you should think of modes more like um, full chord sounds as opposed to individual scales. And there's the chord symbols written as you would see on a chart. And again, just as I sort of said earlier, if we keep going in the idea of thirds, we can write our C major scale um, completely, but in intervals of thirds. So rather than C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, here's C, E, G, B, D, F, and A. So this is a tertial expression of our major scale, meaning our major scale is written in thirds. And you can see below we have our scale numbers, one, three, five, seven, there's our major seven chord, and then nine, 11, and 13, which is the same notes as the second degree, the fourth degree, and the sixth degree. We call that our tension triad. And in order to actually understand what notes we could add into our C, or our C major seven chord, what other notes we could throw in there to get it to sound good, we compare our tension triad to our fundamental triad. So let me just explain. So here's C major triad, here's C with the B, C major seven. Now here's the same ingredients with the ninth, a D. That sounds good. Here's the same ingredients with an F. That doesn't sound good, right? Now here's the same ingredients with an A. And I took the F out because the F didn't sound very good. So why did the F not sound very good? If we compare all of our notes from our tension triad to our fundamental triad, D and C are a whole step apart. F and E, if you remember back to some of our basic musical knowledge, F and E are a half step apart and A and G are a whole step apart. So where we see half steps, it's probably not gonna sound very good. And we call that an avoid note. So I'm actually going to highlight this and make it red. So the fourth degree or the 11th on top of our one chord is something we wanna be very careful about. And that's all that means. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and I've filled in where our avoid notes would be, where the half steps from our fundamental triad and our tension triad would be. And we can see that our two chord is fair game. There are no avoid notes. Same thing with our four chord. That's why Lydian and Dorian are great scales to use for improvising because they have no avoid notes. We have a lot of avoid notes in our three chord, and then we have one avoid note in our one chord, our five chord, our six chord, and then our seven chord. But seven is really kind of a special case. We really don't see seven used a whole lot, um, only really like in jazz when it's used in a minor cadence. Two minor seven flat five, five dominant seven, and then back to one. So seven really in um, like rock and pop music is mostly gonna be like an inversion of the five chord. Now, I hope you are with me so far. I know that was kind of super nerdy and seemingly unrelated, but check this out now. If we take a look at our three major based chords, okay, one chord, four chord, and five chord, and we see what intervals are common between them, let's take a look. Each and every one of these chords has the root note, that's no surprise there, and they each have a major third, okay? They have a perfect fifth, they do not share the same seventh. So one has a major seven, four has a major seven, but five has a flat seven. So that's not common between them. They all share a major ninth interval. They do not share the 11th interval. Okay, so that would be um, 11 here is natural 11, and then on our four chord, it's sharp 11. So B and A, that would be sharp 11 or sharp four there. And then they share the sixth degree or the 13th. So, Let's count that up again. One, three, five are common, and then nine and 13. 
Well, if we lump those together and play them in order from lowest to highest, what do we get? One, nine, or two, three, five, and six. The, the chord tones or the scale tones that we have common on this expression of our one, four, and five chord is the major pentatonic scale, right? So major pentatonic is a common arpeggio or a common group of notes between all three of our major chords in any given key. What about with our minor scales? Let's just take a look at our natural minor and compare it to our other minor chords. One, flat three, five, flat seven, and then nine and 11. We're probably gonna see, just like we saw here, we're probably not gonna see a lot of these avoid notes. Um, so all of our minor chords, of course, have the root, but they also have the minor third, right? So minor third here, minor third here, they have the fifth. And then we also have a flat seven shared between them. We do not have the ninth shared between them because Phrygian has a flat nine, but we also have the 11th that's shared between them. And then Dorian doesn't have a flat 13, it has a natural 13. So the common notes shared across our minor chords, one, flat three, five, flat seven, and 11. So what is that played sequentially? One, flat three, four, or 11, five, and flat seven. That's our minor pentatonic scale, right? Probably no surprises there. So what we can conclude from this is that using pentatonic scales is sort of like pseudo playing arpeggios. So if the chord is C major, I can play C minor pentatonic licks. If the chord is D minor, I can play minor, D minor pentatonic licks. If the chord is G major, I can play G major pentatonic licks, right? So we can use pentatonic scales kind of like we would use arpeggios for soloing over chord changes. Now here's the quick and dirty summary of how we can use this practically. So major or major seven chords, major pentatonic. Minor, minor seven chords, minor pentatonic. Dominant seven chord, so like G7, A7, whatever, you actually have the option of both. You could play major pentatonic licks or minor pentatonic licks. Now, like I said earlier in the intro, this isn't just intellectual pandering. Let's actually take a look at some real world examples of how this is used. Okay, so first I want to reference the song Something by the Beatles, written by George Harrison in George Harrison's guitar solo on this recording, right? So the chord progression over the solo section is C, C major 7, C dominant 7, F, D7. This is non-diatonic. This is a major based 2 chord. D7, G, A minor, A minor major, a minor 7, back to D7, and then F, E flat, G, C. So there's our progression, right? Let's see how he deals with this. So he starts playing in C major pentatonic. So far, that was all. C major pentatonic. Now, when we get to the D7, he plays this riff in D major pentatonic over the D7 chord. And his note choice is there, so when he plays, when we come up on the D, he's landing on A, which is the fifth of D, and then his pentatonic phrase goes five, six, five, one, three, five, and then he bends the five up to six. And if you remember, the next chord in the chord progression is G. And then he's using the G major pentatonic over the G major chord, along with a little bit of chromaticism to grab his notes. And those chromatic notes could be called like a double chromatic down to the third. There's the third of G and then to the fifth. And there's the fifth of G. Then we would move on. And 
then finish the solo. Okay, so here's another example, this time Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones. And when we get into the chorus, we hit a G chord. <laughs> And then the part that's played there is this little riff in G minor pentatonic. So in the key of C, G would be our dominant five chord, a G7. And like I said earlier, you can play or use ingredients for riff writing or solo taking using a minor pentatonic over a five chord or a dominant seven chord. Of course, we also see that in blues all the time, right? Here's an example of major pentatonic over a five chord, uh, the song Peace of Mind by Boston. So for a while, Tom Schultz is using E major and E minor pentatonic. <laughs> Now, when we go to our B, we're in the key of E, now B is our five chord. When the song moves to B, Tom Schultz shifts his perception and plays B major pentatonic. And then he does runs in B major pentatonic. So as you can see, this is really a useful thing to have in our playing and something that's really advantageous to understand when we're studying other solos and other pieces of music. So how do we really get it into our own playing though? So as most of us have probably done with pentatonic scales, where we would play position one, and then position two, and then position three, and then position four, and then position five. Practicing that linear is good to get to know the muscle memory of the shapes. But now for the actual vis visualization of this, here's what you would wanna do instead. Go through all of your chords in any given key and then play their pentatonic scale that's associated with them in position. So don't move your hand up and down the neck. So I'm gonna play this in C, right? Just at our fifth fret here, playing the scale shape we probably all know and love. Okay, now that's C major pentatonic. Our next chord would be D minor. So now here's D minor pentatonic. Here's E, here's E minor pentatonic. Now F, our next chord, F major pentatonic. G, G major pentatonic. A minor, A minor pentatonic. Back to comfort zone, right? And then B minor seven flat five. We're gonna go back to G major pentatonic for this. And then we're back to C. Now, the interesting thing, because major and minor pentatonic are relative of one another, I only played three shapes. Let that sink in. Seven chords, seven chord possibilities within a key, but only three shapes. So C major, one and six, share a shape. Four and two, Share a shape, and then five, three, and seven. Share a shape. And then we're back to one. Now that's just one area of the pentatonic scale. What you want to do with that is move that over into the next position, and then play all three of those possibilities of pentatonic scales around that and then keep moving it. This is a great way to practice really learning all of your pentatonic shapes as well. So I hope that you all found that really enjoyable and insightful. I know we kind of went off the rails in into the spiral of theory uh, for a little bit there, but I know, I know that if you adopt this knowledge, it will really help you to play better, sound great, and understand more. 
My name is Matthew Dale. I'll see you guys on the next one.